That being said, let's move back into a wrestling-related question, the one that was a heavy-duty thing, talking about WrestleMania 17, coming from James in Raleigh, North Carolina, good neck of the woods. I always liked wrestling over in Raleigh, some good wrestling country down there. And he said, hey, Steve, I was wondering if you could talk a little about the sit-down interview that aired on SmackDown before WrestleMania 17. We're coming up on the 14th anniversary of that show, and I consider the promo you guys did before that match to be one of the best sellings of a single match in WWE. WWE history. How much was scripted and how much was ad-libbed? The seriousness and intensity in that room is what lacks in the product today. Okay, James, let me tell you something. That was an awesome piece of business, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that was my idea. And I'm not taking, taking credit for the whole damn thing, but I think it was my idea. And there was nothing scripted about it. Now, Jim Ross probably had a couple of questions written down but, man, as a moderator, no one can ask questions as good as Jim Ross can. And, of course, you know, he was right there really, you know, in his prime in the WWE and totally entrenched. And, you know, in my opinion, he's the greatest announcer uh, and wrestling announcer in the history of the business. And, you know, as great as Gordon Soley was, he just took it, you know, to the next level. He had that extra gear. And this is with all due respect to Lance Russell and Bob Cottle and so many other uh, great ones. But Jim Ross is the best. And, man, you could cut the tension in that room with a knife. And it was real. And there was nothing scripted about it. I didn't know what The Rock was going to say. He didn't know what I was going to say. And we just responded off each other accordingly and answered Jim's questions. And it was a shoot. And then the thing about it is with The Rock... You know, for whatever reason it was, you know, he had great chemistry with a lot of other people, and so did I. But the two of us together were just very dynamic, very competitive. He was trying to be number one. I was number one, and he came close to overtaking me, and my opinion never did. But he was white hot. He had a monster career. He's the biggest movie star in Hollywood right now. But if you go back to 17 and you go to that promo, that was real deal, holy field, competitive aspect of professional wrestling, the way it could and should and still be uh, doing today, done. And that's all I can say about that. It, it was real all the way. And if you go back to the interview that I did with CM Punk on the 2K14 video game release, and that was moderated once again by my old buddy, Jumpin' Jim Ross. And you could cut the tension in that room with the knife because, I mean, you know, me and Punk were taking care of each other, but that was a real deal, man. We're trying to sell video games for 2K14, but also that fantasy matchup between Stone Cold and CM Punk. And, you know, CM Punk's got a hell of a presence and he's got a hell of a damn promo. And same thing with me, sitting there in my leg brace, just had an ACL and a PCL put in my left knee. Man, those pieces of business are fun. And that's the way I want to see pro wrestling presented because people always want to believe and I want to believe. And when I'm doing it, I'm living it and I'm believing it. So to answer your question, man, wasn't no script. It was two cats in there who were in their prime, knew their place, knew what they were there to do, and that was sell tickets. Same thing with me and Punk on the 2K14 thing. You know, we were all there to do business, and so was Jim Ross, the way he presented the questions and went accordingly uh, back and forth to each guy in the serious tone in which he asked the questions, man. So real deal, Holyfield, that's how you sell tickets. That's how you get people to believe in you and your brand and your product. Hey, Steve, I want to say how much I enjoy your show and look forward to listening to it each week. You and Kristen are a great double act, and your antics always make me smile. My question relates to your in-ring rivalry with The Rock, specifically leading up to WrestleMania 17. The two of you cut a joint backstage interview with Jim Ross on SmackDown in the run-up. I think it's one of the best and most original segments I've seen in the 25 years I've been watching wrestling. You've spoken of your respect for The Rock, but was there any animosity during that period? Your intensity and shoot style really gives the impression there is more going on between you both than it being just cutting a promo for the belt. Thanks again for the award-winning podcast. Who knew I'd learned so much about turtles from Stone Cold? Tony in Scotland. Well, I tell you what, Tony, that's a real good question. And, man, if I am mistaken, uh, and I, I can't, 
I think I think that segment was my idea because I always like those old school promos when the guys would be right next to each other, you know, talking about uh, you know doing battle and getting ready to fight for the belt. And yeah, you're not going to fight right then and there because it's almost like being at a press conference. You got to do the work to promote the fight. And this is pro wrestling, and I've always believed in shoot aspect of presentation of the product. And so when you look at the talent involved, myself, who was on fire, Rock was on fire. And yes, of course, I have tremendous respect for the Rock. I always have. At that point, I thought I'd kind of flatline just a cunt here. And during this build, you know, that when we did the uh, the video package with the Limp Biscuit song, My Way, you know, people still consider that to be, if not one of the best, the best build-ups to a major uh, pay-per-view in history. And because it was such a good piece of music and the, the way it was edited and the storyline that we were telling. But you got to throw into the fact that when Jim Ross, you know, conducts an interview like he did, man, he was the man in the middle asking the questions with with respect and and a shoot presentation. So, man, it was it was a total work. Uh, man, Rock respects me as much as I do him, and we always brought out the best in each other. And it was just the the fact of the matter, as Rock would have said. You know, we were doing heavy duty business. We were the main event at WrestleMania 17, and that was a hell of a damn card. Everybody on the card that night got off. Everybody got their shit in. I don't think there was a dud match the entire night. And then to go out there in a record setting Astrodome crowd and just knock the sum bitch out of the park, it was big time. So we followed up all of the promo stuff with a five star match. But yeah, it was a total work. When you're doing serious business, you know, you, just like Rock said, you know, he's gonna get every ounce of blood, sweat, and, and whatever he had in him. And I told him, I said, Rock, I need that belt. I need it more than you could ever imagine. And that was a shoot, but it was a work. But yeah, it was real serious. When we uh, did that piece of business, we just shook hands and then we went our separate ways. But it was a total work, no animosity, nothing but love and respect between myself and The Rock. And that was good business, and that's the, the, the kind of business that I believe in. What we were doing in the Attitude Era, Jesus Christ, the whole fucking locker room was stacked with talent. And it goes back into that mid-80s stuff, which I always speak of uh, so fondly with, you know, Mid-South Power Pro, NWA, uh, you know, World Class Championship Wrestling before they went on to decline. Serious business. Serious business draws money. So does emotions. So do storylines. And so do gold titles. That was a work, but we conducted it just like a goddamn shoot. No animosity. Next question.